you very much. Good morning. Welcome to the big questions from the Manor Church of England School in York. Uh, I'm Nicky Campbell. Well, you may think you can see about, I don't know, 60 or, or 70 people who are all getting on tremendously well here this morning in the seats around me. But uh, one of our guests, the author, Lorna Byrne, can see many more beings than that. She says, everyone here is accompanied by an angel. We're just not pre prepared to listen to them. Should we listen to the angels? Lorna, welcome to the program. Your, Thank you. Your book has been tremendously successful. It was number one in the Sunday Times bestseller. I think it's number, number, number five today. You've lectured all around the world. What can you see right now? Well, I suppose one, one thing to, to tell you all, I see the audience here, and they're a wonderful audience. But as well, I see your guardian angel physically behind each and every one of you. And it doesn't matter what religion you are or what nationality or whether you believe or not, even if you say you don't believe in God, you believe in nothing, um, you have a guardian angel that God has given you as a gift. And um, to, to me, you know, giving that one message all around the world is actually helping people to, to be kinder to each other, to be nicer. It's joining people together. And it, it's helping, you know, I hear from so many young people you know, especially yeah. young men, I don't know why young men, um, saying that now they realise they have a guardian angel. So and we have a guardian angel. Be good. Yeah, yeah, There's, which is no bad it's, thing. It's a good yeah. thing. So uh, we have guardian angels and there are other yeah. angels as well. Yes, I see other angels as well. There's other angels here as well and I'm looking at the audience so that I won't be distracted too much. What can you see off? Do I have a guardian angel? You have a beautiful guardian angel. Uh, that's um, not my editor in my earpiece. It's my no, it's not your editor. <laughs> in, 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 What's in my your guardian earpiece? angel look like? Um, your guardian angel is actually giving a male, a male appearance. Now, only, only four angels give a human appearance within themselves, so mm. I wouldn't be able to describe mm. them. They're very, very beautiful. They're neither male nor female, but they do that for us. Um, Are they big? Yes. Mm. Does, They're Douglas, always does Douglas free. have a guardian angel? I don't want a he? response here, Douglas. I'm just <laughs> okay. asking. Does Douglas have a guardian angel? Douglas does have a guardian angel. And I, I know he, he doesn't believe, but that doesn't matter. Um, does his guardian angel look happy? His guardian angel actually is looking down on him and is quite contented with him, mm. quite happy with mm. him. You have to remember, I have never seen any guardian angel or any angel being, you know, annoyed with us. They seem to never give up on us. They keep on, on encouraging us. And one thing we must remember is your guardian angel, whether you believe in God or not, is a gift from God, you know, to guide you through, 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 through your life. And your guardian angel will never overstep the boundaries of your free will because I see them talking to people. But how do they guide Do we hear them? How do we listen? We, how do we, we get that guidance? We do, we do hear them. Um, but a lot of the time, I'm afraid we don't. We don't listen. We kind of, you know, push push it as, so aside. We, yeah. um, but here today, everybody's here today and talking about wonderful subjects. So we are listening, as yeah. well. There are ways of hearing. Because Steve yeah. over here, you've seen an angel, haven't you? Oh, I have. Yeah, on more than one occasion. What happened when? You, tell me about the ten foot angel you saw. <clears throat> well, when when my second daughter was born, my wife had had a difficult pregnancy on the first time through. And we were praying for nine months that she would have a short labour, wouldn't need anything more than gas and air, and that it wouldn't last more than four hours, uh, and that it would be a normal delivery. And uh, 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 the midwife came into the room and said, I'm sorry to tell you this, but you need to be thinking of 24 hours for this labour. I want you to ask now for an epidural, and we're going to have the forceps ready. Now, we'd been praying for nine months a different way, and so together, my wife and I, we just prayed, well, Lord, what's all this about? And at that very second, this huge um, person appeared in the room. Now, I, I, didn't, well, I wasn't looking for an angel. I had no idea that an angel was likely to appear in the room. But he was stood, I would say, about 10 feet tall, no wings, looked masculine, wearing something like armour, stood at the foot of the bed where my wife was in with his hands laid out. And a booming voice filled the room saying, this angel has awaited his charge since the dawn of time. And I suppose it was at that moment that I started to believe in guardian angels. Mm. And you saw one on the M62 as well. Uh, yeah, when I was quite young, 1920, I was driving home from Brie 1920? House. 1920? Uh, yes, you absolutely. Don't look that old. 19 or 20. <laughs> right. uh, I was driving along the M62, hit some thick fog. Right. I was a young driver. I was very, not very confident. It was the worst fog I've ever driven in. And um, I just didn't know what to do. I stopped the car. 
And all of a sudden, I saw this figure run past me. And um, I thought, what's that about? A guy running, uh, it looked like he was wearing shorts and a T-shirt, running along the M62 in the fog. Seems very dangerous. And um, after a moment or two, I thought, I'd like to know where he is. So I drove the car very slowly forward and caught a glimpse of him in front of me. So he started walking. So I thought, well, I can't hit anything if he's walking in front of me. So I started driving at his speed, except for the fact he ended up running at about 50 miles an hour. And the thing that shocked me was that when I drove out of the fog bank, yeah. there was no one in front of me. And until that moment in time, I hadn't thought, this is an angel. Well, loads of people have experience like, like that of seeing, of seeing angels, and I think that is, is very, very wonderful. You know, that the message of the angels are, are being spread around, around the world because they are giving so many messages. And I know what is their message to you? Because you've, you've, they've told you about various scenarios, haven't they, for, they that have. could happen yeah. in this world. Yeah. And one, a couple of those scenarios I know are, are too frightening for you to tell us about. Yeah, because um, I wouldn't like those, those futures. But one of, I know we were talking about uh, Iran there a few minutes ago, and one of the messages from the angels is for us all to remember that war is easy to make, but peace is the hardest thing to keep. And we must keep on talking. We mustn't give up. We must keep that. There you are. Peter's leading. The, Peter's leading. Yeah, this is a great yeah. man. But you think some of these angels are not necessarily from God? They could be demons. Well, not everything that shines bright is always from the light, shall we say? I do believe in Luke Skywalker as well as Darth Vader, shall we put it that way? Uh, but I, what I do know is that the Bible teaches that angels announce the birth of Jesus, they announce the resurrection of Jesus, and angels are always wanting to direct us to Jesus. I believe even, that. Even along the M62? Even along the, the M62, yeah. I, what do you think? Peter, you were leading the applause. Do you believe in, you're a practicing Roman Catholic. Do you believe in angels? I was brought up to believe in guardian angels. Um, I confess that after I reached the age of reason, I became somewhat skeptical about that aspect <laughs> of Catholic doctrine, but it so happens that on the 9th of February, I hit black ice at 60 miles an hour on the M4, skidded hopelessly out of control, bounced like a pinball between the barriers on either side, uh, car a total write-off, and yet I emerged perfectly intact, as you an can angel. see. I didn't see an, an angel, but my f almost my first thought was... Sounds like an assassination attempt. <laughs> <laughs> Israeli More conspiracy theories. <laughs> More conspiracy theories. No, my first thought was to think, well, maybe, maybe. I do have a guardian maybe. angel after all. When you listen to these stories about people seeing angels, if you took away the religious aspect, they would be in mental homes, <laughs> right? <laughs> if people walk, it's, I've just been seeing. So I, I remember I used to go, know this uh, guy, the editor of a newspaper, and he used to he used to come out of his he used to have a little room and he used to come out and he say, "I just finished talking to Bob Marley," and he had these conversations with Bob Marley, and everybody thought he was mad. So because it's religious. We yeah. think it's all right, we call them angels. Now, I'm not criticising, I'm just saying it's the state of our society now, that if I see somebody, yeah. that's, and I say it's not religious, mm. it's, I just hear voices and I see people, I go in a mental institution. Mm. <laughs> but if I say that those people are sent from God or it's religious, but like I said, I'm just commenting, for me, what this lady's saying is harmless in a sense. Look, yeah, yeah. I've been very interested in near-death experiences. Yeah. The same, whatever country you go. Well, Lorna's message is, to, yeah, there you go, go on. If I, Lorna I, wants, I, you, you want I the religious to you. Not, can I, before I come to you, yeah, Lorna, okay. let's just yeah, establish. Yeah. Well, we're going to get a wide shot of the audience here, right, and everyone else who's here as well. And put your hands up <laughs> if you, put your hands up if you believe in angels. God, right, there we are. Has anyone else seen an angel in the audience? Fairy. See, what about fairies, that man said that. See, some people will find this difficult fairies. to take. No, no. Yeah. Lorna, what were you saying? You were going to come it back doesn't, then. It doesn't matter to me whether people laugh or ridicule. Yeah. I see angels physically, and I have since the moment I was born, since I opened my eyes. I see them every day. And I know it's so hard for people out there in the world that can't see angels physically. I know angels are real. It's normal and natural. Yeah. I, and I know everyone has a soul, and God is real. And to me, the most fascinating thing is that I see angels physically with everyone, and it doesn't matter what religion they are, or even if they're none, and I think that is very, very important. Well, Harris is just saying that's very important. I think that's yeah. very important. I think um, from an Islamic perspective, from a Muslim perspective, there is, there is the dogma of faith and then the spirituality as well. We believe, as Muslims, that there are at least two angels with you at all times, uh, one on the right, one on the left, and mainstream Islam believes one on the right actually writes down 
when you make a good intention and then when you do it, write it down again. Well, let's establish this. We might, we might solve this one. Yeah. Are you seeing two angels or one angel? I, I always only see one guardian angel. Wrong. I, I <laughs> that's fine. That's I fine. But I said, a minim I said a minimum of two. I said a minimum, a minimum of two. Yeah, but but, but the, point, the point Lorne is making yeah. is, is very important. It doesn't matter whether, from, from my perspective, whether somebody is somebody of faith or somebody of no faith. Mm. They are still created by from, from my belief by one God and and the rules that God sets in terms of the creation and the angels and the soul and the spirit is the same for you ir ir irrelevant ir irrespective of what faith you are and then there's the free will and one can decide what they want to do yeah okay. Douglas what do you listen to all this as a as an atheist um, well I think it's a very good idea for a book um, <laughs> just because she's on the best seller and, uh, it's, it's why your book is on the best seller and mine isn't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can't but, but read, I do read or write, I mean, I, you I have to remember. So, sorry, is Lorna, sorry? Yeah, I couldn't read or write. Mm. I'm dyslexic. And I, I can't even say the word properly. <laughs> yeah. And as a child, the angels used to say I would write about them and God, and yeah. I literally took no notice. And it was when the angel Michael, when I was married, with wheeling one of my children home, said it was getting near the time time to write and I just looked at him and said how on earth does God expect me to write one book when I can't read or write very, I was very little just you know exit you know you no, dictated it yes, didn't you you dictated it that, okay. yeah and okay. he just said help would be sent and someone did come along and buy me a speakeasy you know you speak into a dictaphone okay well, yeah. sorry Douglas what are you saying you, you were saying no, but I, mean, I mean it just seems to me that to an extent uh, whether you believe this is the case or not it's uh, it's dangerous to an extent if you take advantage of the credulous and people's fears and real fears. And people have a real fear of well, what death. What did Steve for see in that, in that? Well, in that. people have a real fear of death. And they always have done, they always will do. And there are always people who can provide explanations for what happens. If you tell people they're looked after, it makes them feel better than if you tell them they're alone. So people who believe in reason on these things are always at a disadvantage because we don't have soft fairy tales and we can't take advantage of the credulous and we can't claim that angels say rather banal things in our spare time. Not, not that's, only, that's not only that. I mean, Reverend Canon Sam. Yeah, I mean, Steve's story is, is, gives a lot of comfort to some people, but I always think about those who don't have those experiences. I mean, I believe in angels, but I mean... What do you mean you believe in angels? Well, I think... On the M62? Uh, yeah, well, you listen to these stories and you've got to think, OK, that was an experience and it could be interpreted otherwise, but... I mean, I worry about those who don't have that sort if, of... If you know, in here's car, if he had have died that evening, yeah. he would not be saying anything about the angel. Lots of people just die on exactly. motorway crashes. And that, that's the and, point. And they don't go, yeah, you see, the guardian angel let him down. Yeah, they, they, that's, they, that's, that's the point. Okay. That's the point. You, you know, for every child who's sort of rescued, there are so many others. And there's people living lives of quiet desperation. I wish that we all had an angel who could speak and help. Because, I mean, back to this multiculturalism debate, I mean, what we're worried about are people who are living isolated lives and lives of quiet desperation. I wish they had some sort of angel to help them. And I think the only thing is, it's not about spirit, it's for us to get involved and become the angel, the messenger. That's what it means for other people, to help other people and to do the best. Kieran, is it about learning how to... Do you believe angels can speak no, to us? we or? don't believe in angels as Hindus, but it is fascinating what you are saying. And, and I would well, believe... Who is saying? What Lorna has saying about right. seeing angels, you're able to communicate with them, communicate with God. And I would be interested to know whether these angels were there thousands of years ago, at the time of Lord Krishna as well. Is that something I, they can tell I, you? I believe so, yes. yes. So they were also serving Lord Krishna as angels? Yes. Um, I, that's, that's, the, that's the thing. I see everyone with a guardian, guardian angel. I see angels with, with everybody. And it doesn't matter. And I, I know the other man was say, saying there are some, you know, when somebody gets sick or killed in a crash, where's, where's the angel? But you have to remember the guardian angel is there. And we're not, when, when we are born, we're born to live. But we have to die too. And that's part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, we had, a bit, we had a bit of a yeah. confrontation on this program earlier on, which, was, uh, which Benjamin felt very uncomfortable with. Yeah. When the gentleman there was, uh, said something disobliging, uh, Benjamin felt, and Benjamin felt offended by it. Um, his, would his guardian angel and Benjamin's guardian angel be conferring on that incident earlier on? No, because their guardian angel can't um, overstep the boundary of the free will. Would they will. speak to each other, the two guardian um, angels? Yes, on, on occasions, but not, not mm. constantly. I don't right. ever see guardian angels constantly speaking well, to, to angel each other. Will his guardian angel ever to call a black man sunshine again? I think it's I really don't know. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> I, I can't <laughs> Seriously, um, there are people who see other people 
dead relatives. Do you know about this? Yes. Um, do you see that as well? On occasions, if God allows me to see, to see, to see a soul, yes. Like before my husband died, when mm. he was very ill, I saw his soul come up out, out of his body and I felt very privileged to but see But some that. people can see, look at people now and see their dead grandfather and, and dead relatives. No, I no. only see the angels with everybody. Uh, okay, I, I, I did see an angel once. Um, he was in a nightclub in Birmingham, but she was <laughs> married. <laughs> <laughs> Sunset. Very <laughs> sunset about us being the messengers of God is really important. Yeah. And the good news, which is what angels are supposed to announce, right. has got to be that we can be the answer to a lot of people's needs. Thank you very much indeed. And have a, have a good sermon this afternoon thank when you, you go and do that. Thank you, thank you all very much indeed. Back again next week. Special edition is fundamentalism undermining faith. Join us then for now. Goodbye from everyone here, including your guardians. See you soon. Well done.